And you thought I went away forever? Ha 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 ha. No. I have been just swimming away in my pickle jar, surrounded by pickle juice, but I'm still here. And I just wanted you to know that. It's been a tough time. I mean, first of all, you guys eliminated Sunday Fun Day, so I have not been given that many opportunities to come out and play. Somebody tried to throw me into a hamburger not too long ago. Then there came these people that wanted to pickle me away in a sandwich. No, 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 no. Somebody even tried to use me as a sex toy, but I proved to be too slippery for that. <laughs> uh, Paco, I need a sound effect for that. There you go. So I just wanted to make sure that you knew that I'm still here. I've been in a pickle, though, with this business of all the tourists coming back and the sanitary measures, so we want your opinions about that later on today. So now I turn it over to Paco. I'm going to continue to just float away in my pickle juice. da ba do 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 Oh, that pickle. You know, it's like you got to miss the pickle. So <laughs> it was time to say hello to our little friend. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Coffee and Headlines. This is our morning get together live here on Facebook. Sorry about the pickle stance, but pickle, you know, when pickle wants to make a statement, he wants to make a statement. Um, <clears throat> so here we are. It is Wednesday, November 3rd. We have a lot of things to talk about. We will not be walking today, but we will be walking later on this week, I'm sure. Um, but we have news. We have all kinds of important things. Um, and I already see a very important question from Sheila because you are not the only one that cannot find the latest restrictions. And the latest restrictions are going to be very much something that we're going to talk about um, in the near future. Uh, before we do that is, uh, of course, our usual housekeeping. If you are new, please let us know by writing the word new in your comment. And we'll be so very happy to give you a nice little friendly welcome later on. And if you have something that you wish to share that is truly important that you want to make sure that I acknowledge or comment on or answer uh, or try to answer anyway, please add a letter Q at the beginning of your comment like Sheila has done here. It helps me a lot to determine whether the question is for me or if you're just having a pickle time talking to one another. So with that said and done, let us dive into our news for today. Well, we start with the traditional charro parade, which was organized as part of the local Day of the Day celebration. Guess what? Well, it also drew thousands of people back out to the Malecon, 
which did not get the memo. Um, and once again, it drew criticism from local media outlets, but also from state health authorities, which were wondering, what are you guys doing, uh, municipality of Puerto Vallarta? And according to this news report, local authorities apparently went ahead with the celebrations because the state of Jalisco had shifted to the color green in the federal COVID-19 stoplight indicator. Now, this makes perfect sense, but somehow local authorities apparently forgot that the state of Jalisco does not abide by the federal indicator and has not abided by it since the beginning of the pandemic per orders of our governor, Enrique Alfaro. Even Jaime Alvarez Sayas, who oversees our sanitary region within our state, commented that being in the green zone does not mean preventive measures cease to be in place. What will this mean for us concerned locals moving forward? Well, we'll have a little bit more commentary about this in a couple of minutes. Meanwhile, and as briefly mentioned yesterday by Heather Wilson, Bahia de Banderas has also initiated a leftover COVID-19 campaign with a single vaccination point in San Jose del Valle. This campaign takes place today between 3 and 6 p.m. and tomorrow and Friday between 9 and 5 p.m. So if you are a Bahia de Banderas resident, this is your chance to get vaccinated. As in previous campaigns, there is no clear or official indication that you can be in Jalisco and simply cross over to Nayarit to get your vaccine or vice versa. And as for our own leftover vaccination campaign, which we mentioned yesterday here in Puerto Vallarta, it is indeed taking place today, tomorrow and Friday at La Lija. And this is for folks that have not been vaccinated at all. Um, or for folks that received their first Sinovac vaccine uh, back in June and did not get the second one. In addition to this vaccination campaign, authorities are also making vaccines available at the Naval Hospital and the Easter Clinic, but those vaccines are only for pregnant women and also for minors with pre-existing conditions. This is the first time that we have a, a vaccine campaign for minors. And of course, we know that if you have a minor in your household that has a pre-existing uh, condition, all you have to do is go to the website and register your minor. Um, now, this is important. For better or worse, the aforementioned director of our sanitary region, Jaime Alvarez Ayes, also stated that after this leftover campaign, which consists of 10,000 doses of um, the, the Sinovac vaccines, 100% of Vallartenses will have received at least one vaccine against COVID-19. So moving forward, it would, be, it would seem to me that bringing more vaccines to the region will stop being a priority. So again, if you are due for your vaccines, just get it done. And if you can get it done today because you don't want it to be one of those situations in which we run out of vaccines again and you miss out one more time. Ooh, scratchy nose. Um, let's see, what else do we have? Okay, yes, now let's comment on this because local tourism authorities are thrilled with the fact that Puerto Vallarta registered at 70% hotel occupation um, during Day of the Dead weekend. Municipal Tourism Ludwig Estrada commented, we are very happy because it's been a while since we had a good long weekend here in Puerto Vallarta with national and international planes, um, plane arrivals full to capacity with national and international tourists. This gives me personally a second to pause and ask myself, am I ready as an English speaking uh, local for what's coming? I mean, Thanksgiving and Christmas and New Year's are all coming and we can anticipate even higher hotel occupations if health authorities allow them. Are we ready for this? More human density as we walk along our sidewalks in our supermarkets? Um, it is a complicated issue and it has been through the whole pandemic because on the one hand, 
we have the decisions made by authorities, and then we have how local authorities interpret these decisions. And of course, we want everybody to do better financially. We want businesses to be able to prosper. But um, I find myself as a local, and I want to know how you feel about this. I find myself as a local, um, you know, being hopeful for a great, successful holiday season and fall winter season but at the same time i find myself thinking i you know the few times that i've been out and about just running errands i felt the increasing density of people out there and somehow i'm not ready for it um and again i'm not saying we don't want tourists here or any of that stuff this is just how i personally feel at present time and where my comfort level is right now where is your comfort level? How are you guys feeling? You know, the two incidents at the Malecon, first the Halloween um, crowd and then the Charro parade crowd. Oh, I cannot even speak. Uh, just gave, gave me a moment to pause about the whole thing. So let me know how you're thinking about this, how you're feeling about, um, about the upcoming higher season or you know winter season whatever you want to call it and i'll look forward to reading your comments as we move into the chit chat section momentarily uh let me also share this news item with you according to this the building that was most damaged along insurgente street during hurricane nora is now scheduled to be demolished in a matter of two weeks due to excessive damage also known as the la surtidora building it has been the home for a very well-regarded department store for years and has been the home of many friends in the upper levels living you know as as tenants in the upper levels in addition it has also been the site of a recently opened hotel and co-work space along with a popular asian restaurant not to mention a site for an, an unimaginable number of memories for so many locals what is not clear to me is if the entire building will be demolished to the ground or if parts of it will remain um, needless to say, we are mindful of not only the current tenants at the, in the building, but also of the enormous investment that Eric Robb and his team have put forward in the creation of the hotel and the co-work space, or Ryan Donner's real estate offices, or Francine's Bonito Kitchen. So if any of those that I just mentioned or Heather are here uh, oh, I see a comment from Heather about vaccination. But Heather, if you have a comment about what's going to happen with uh, you as a tenant, whether the whole building is coming down, unfortunately, the news item is not very clear. And I would imagine that you may have something to contribute there. If you do, it would certainly be very much appreciated. And of course, um, if you need to leave and find another place to live, um, you know, uh, Please take advantage of this community to see if anybody can point you in the right direction. Let us now turn over to the weather, and I have one more pleasurable thing to share with you. But first, let's take a look at our weather forecast. Snarky Weather says, did the UN Climate Summit consider that wiping out humanity would solve the climate change problem? <laughs> well, yeah, we could get rid of humans, but I don't know that that's going to um, give us a place or a time to have fun like we have fun all the time. Look at that. We, it is 28 degrees. It is warmer than yesterday. That's no fun. But humidity is down to 76%, so I kind of like that. Presently, it feels like 31 degrees, and our temperature in Fahrenheit is 82 degrees. What can we expect um, we can expect that today is going to be a humid day with a high temperature of 31, low temperature of 22. Tomorrow, Thursday, humid and partly cloudy, as we said yesterday, with a high temperature of 31, low temperature of 21. And Friday, humid through the day, high temperature of 31, low temperature of 21. There you have it. Um, and of course, last but not least, I have one more link to share with you. This one does not have anything to do with Puerto Vallarta, but we've been sharing these for some time. And this is another one of those wonderful articles from the New York Times, five minutes that will make you love, 
love either a composer or a specific musical instrument. And in this case, it is five minutes that will make you love Bach. Johann Sebastian Bach, you cannot mess around with Bach. And there are some great comments on beautiful works of this very well-known Baroque composer. And of course, links to specific music that you can listen to in case you want to appreciate why a handful of art critics and musicians have chosen specific works um, for us to better enjoy. So if you're curious about this, the way these articles go is specific people offer their comment on a specific work, and then there's a link to enjoy um, a recording of the work. And we have a composer, a musicologist, a Times Classical Music and Dance reporter, a conductor, John Elliott Gardner. He's conducted many wonderful um, uh, recordings of Bach's work. So there you have it. And that's what we have for news for today. Let us now turn over to, no, not turn over to the pickle. Uh, we're going to turn over to your comments just to see what everybody is up to today. Lots of good morning as always and very much appreciated. Um, boom, ba -dum, ba -dum. Javier says it's getting cooler. Yes, little by little. Um, Mihal says so happy to see Pickle. Well, I fig figured this would be a proper way to welcome you back to Puerto Vallarta. Um, I just made that up actually. <laughs> um, <laughs> Jenny says, he, watch out, here comes the relish maker. No, 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 Pickle will have none of that. We definitely don't want any relish makers getting any close to our Tushi. See, there you go. The Pickle has strong statements about this. Uh, let's see. <laughs> I don't think Blair had seen the Pickle. Um, it's not a reason to love me, but maybe you, <clears throat> maybe you love the Pickle, you know. Maybe you don't love me, Blair. Maybe you love the pickle, and that's okay, too. You know, pickles deserve some love. I love a good pickle from time to time. Um, haven't had a pickle for a while, and I'm due. I am actually due. Where are the official COVID restrictions listed for Jalisco and or Puerto Vallarta? We cannot find any website that lists them. We can only find the federal ones. That is a great question, Sheila, because, you know, I vis um, a local business owner told me, not too long ago, asked a question, you know, where are the, the latest restrictions? And I said to this business owner, this was last week, I said to him, well, we just went over to the green in the federal um, uh, indicator. So it's very likely that the Jalisco Health Board will meet this week and make updates. Well, guess what? The Jalisco Health Board never made updates. So all this business of Puerto Vallarta being able to have Day of the Dead festivities and all those chingaderas came out of nowhere. You know, it was just a fabricated thing from the local uh, uh, government. But back to your question and a very good one. Where are the latest um, official restrictions listed? I don't know, but I will do this because you are the second person that has asked this. I will endeavor to go back through our uh, list of broadcasts and find the last time they were updated and I will find those um, those indicators so that we can all remember exactly what we're supposed to do or what authorities are supposed to do this time around. I know that it is very important for restaurant owners, bar owners, and stuff like that, hotel owners as well. And for the rest of us, regardless of the indications, for me, I continue to recommend this, take it or leave it. If you walk into a situation indoors or outdoors, public or private where you do not feel comfortable simply turn around and walk away moving right along let's see what else we have uh dennis happy to be back in versailles i won't believe it until i see it uh let's see ah Jenny asks, there is a cruise ship sitting out in the bay pointed towards Puerto Vallarta, but has been sitting there for at least two hours. Anyone know why it has not docked? Just curious. Jenny, this is, as I understand it, the Atlantis cruise, which is the gay LGBT cruise, which is in town. I, um, 
I would imagine they must have disembarked. Maybe they disembarked really early and the ship is sitting outside. Or maybe you're talking about a different ship. But I, what I do know is that the Atlantis crews arrived this morning. Somebody shared a video of that with me. Um, let's see what else. Any word on flu shots and where to get them? That's a great question. A great question, Bill. Thank you. Uh, we announced that flu shot season began today. I have not seen a specific um, place announced just yet, but I am hoping that within the next couple of days, we will get more information about that. The flu shot is important to me, and I'm sure that it is important to a number of folks here in the cluster. So I'll be so very happy to keep an eye open for that. Um... This is a comment probably having to do with all these people that are here and the parades and so forth and so on. And uh, yes, I'm curious about this, Javier, and we'll have to wait a couple of weeks to see what the numbers look like. And uh, I suppose the only saving grace if we have a reflection in the numbers in a couple of weeks is that that will hopefully, fingers crossed, give authorities a second to pause about what decisions they make for things coming on along the line. We have uh, Thanksgiving coming in about a month. We have the um, the processions, the Guadalupe processions coming up at the beginning of December. Will they have those or will they not? And then, of course, we have all the people that come to Puerto Vallarta for Christmas and New Year. So hopefully, you know, our government will continue to be watchful of, um, of the numbers moving forward. Um... Ah, Roy also feels similarly. Again, we'll have to wait and see what happens. Um, oh, Raymond, nice try. Why do minors get their own vaccination schedule? Minors? Oh, my, minors, like like young people, not minors, you silly. <laughs> uh, let's see, let's see. Uh are we ready? Javier says, I'm not ready. Anxiety. I hear you. I hear you. Um, Scott gets punny and says, it sounds like PV may prosper with the coming herds, but PV might find itself in a pickle. Yeah, that's precisely how I feel. Um, let's see. Ah, one from Heather. No, of course, we're not ready at just 43 percent fully vaccinated here. Even the restaurants, places we've gone where we could feel relatively safe before are now buzzing. Yes, Heather, I totally agree. Um, and I know that many of us have different comfort levels to deal with, but there is a bottom line. And uh, the question is, of course, are the local businesses abiding by this bottom line? Uh, is the local government abiding by it? I am, I am left knowing that ultimately I choose to go where I choose to go and choose to stay home when I choose to stay home. And that will continue to be my very own saving grace. Um, if all those in those massive crowds would have been wearing face masks, I would felt less resentful of those gatherings. I hear you, Julie. And there was a comment on one of the news items that I shared, the one in which uh, local health authorities were frowning upon the parade. They, the the uh, local authorities were questioned as to whether they uh, were going to be distributing face masks. And, and there were mixed responses. Some people said, well, no, we're not going to do it. And then some of the people said, well, we have three boxes here. But again, is it how much of it is uh, the authorities' responsibility and how much is it the population's responsibility to... Um, to follow the guidelines, you know, it's a complicated thing. Uh, let's see. Personally, I'm not interested in being in crowded places. I want to stay and believe we should still social distance. Well, yes, I want businesses to be successful, but I will not be going to businesses that do not follow social distance. Way to go. Way to go. Um... Linda is happy for business owners, but I'll probably avoid crowds downtown or elsewhere. I hear you totally. Um, oh, thank you very much for that, Sherry. Flu vaccines are available now, free Monday through Friday. Take ID at any center of the Salud, and the main Salud is at Juarez, 
956 and 957. Excellent. I hope this information comes from a reputable source, Sherry. If it does, please share it. Share it, Sherry, so that we can uh, put it in the show notes. But thank you very much for that. Um, um, Kathy says she's living her life by Paco's advice. And of course, Kathy's forgetting that I'm living my life as uh, by Kathy's advice. So there you have it. Uh, it's great that you guys are back here in Puerto Vallarta. Uh, Lisa says, I'm new. We will buy you a coffee soon. Well, forget about buying the coffee just now, Lisa. Just make sure that uh, you are finding what you're looking for here at Coffee and Headlines. That's the most important thing, Lisa. Welcome to the community. And if you are finding connections that inspire you or make your life more connected, uh, hey, we welcome the coffee. Absolutely. Uh, let's see what else we have another ah thank you Heather I was looking for this the demolition of La Surtidora building only includes the front section please God Ryan's office space Bonito kitchen what's left of Hector and Alex's apartment are all going my apartment just behind the part coming down oh dear the hotel and co-work part of the businesses downstairs apparently survived and from my understanding, there will be no rebuilding in the near future. Wow. Well, it is it is a sad, sad situation. And um, I just feel for everybody involved uh, or everybody that is presently in the building or was planning to be in the building in the future. And hopefully this is all for the best. Thank you very much for sharing that information, Heather. Um, Let's see. Pa -da -pa 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 -pa. <laughs> what does your shirt say? This is my Jazz It Up shirt. It says Jazz It Up. And I found it at my favorite place for t-shirts at Optima. And I think I paid like 40 pesos for it. Love that shirt, uh, that, the, that shop. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Raymond used the word chingaderas in an Uber yesterday and the driver totally cracked up. Way to go. Way to go. Uh, <clears throat> Shil asks, did Puerto Vallarta just have a time change as I live in Florida and our clocks don't go back until the 7th? The answer is yes. Yes, Shil. Uh, we had our time change this past uh, Saturday night going into Sunday. So uh, it is at a different time in which time changes in the United States. And that's just that's just the way it is. Uh, Sheila found the current Jalisco restrictions. Um, I thought I went into that website and I couldn't find the specific information for the latest update. But thank you very much, Sheila. I will gladly take a look at it and share the information moving on. Uh, da, 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 da. Ah, thank you very much. Karen says, Centro de Salud Don Juarez per Pam Thompson. Information came up, came up suddenly yesterday. So Pam Thompson... Um, I take that as a, a, a valid enough source of information. So there you have it. Uh, there's another one pointing to Pam Thompson about the flu shots. Check her Facebook page. This is great to know. Um, so there you go. Just go to the closest Centro de Salud. There's another confirmation of that. Fantastic. Um, let's see. Uh, pa -pa -di -pa -pa. More confirmation of, of flu shots. Terrific. Um, Kathy, again, pandemics have historically ended when the general population decides it is over. Public health officials have very little control over that timing. Well, regardless of who makes the decision, I'm still uneasy and I feel less uneasy simply being able to share my my uneasiness with you and seeing that some people feel uneasy as well all we can do is tread forward carefully and responsibly and uh, as we've said before taking care of ourselves first and foremost uh, because we can be of very little use to others if we don't first take care of ourselves and that's the way i feel if you feel differently that's okay too 
Um, and we've come to the end of today's broadcast. As always, I thank you very much for your time, your patience, your questions, your comments, and of course, your company. We will come back tomorrow with more information as we discover it. So between now and then, get your flu shot, get your COVID shot, continue to take good care of yourselves and your loved ones, and let's connect again sometime very soon. Have a good one.